Are you an HR department of one trying to figure out how to balance task and strategy while keeping up with changes in regulatory compliance? Do you need a fresh outlook on old topics? Then stop what you're doing, grab your coffee, and get ready to recharge. If you have people, you have problems to solve and things to do. Your host is Brenda Neckvottle, a 20-year human resource professional, ready to explore the HR industry with veterans of business and life with fresh eyes and new ideas. Learn about the rapidly evolving changes in employment law around the country, as well as new tactics to deploy and build engagement in your workforce. If you're looking to implement new practices to make your job easier in HR, then this podcast is for you. Hello and welcome to the Best Practices in Human Resources podcast. Excellent, excellent, excellent episode coming up. So glad you guys are here. If this is your first time listening, we've got an epic show for you. I cannot wait till you dip in, dive in, and hear more about what's going on. And if you are a returning listener, thank you so very much. You are awesome. You're coming back week after week to hear what's going on, and I cannot begin to tell you how much I appreciate it. So I'm here to help you share with you the what and the how in human resources because I'm in the human business, and that means that there's a greater number of dynamics in the workplace to balance and manage. But most importantly, this time we are going to be talking about everybody's favorite that happens at the beginning of the month, poster updates. Um, we've got some employment law changes across the nation, and I'm going to share with you where you can go ahead and get access to these as well. Also, today we've got a repeat guest and his wife. We've got Mark Victor Hansen, who has returned. Mark Victor Hansen is one of the um, main co-authors of all the Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Uh, he's just a phenomenal human being. His wife is just completely lovely. And they have written an amazing book called Ask. And, you know, Mark, is, Mark has had several businesses, and so... He's a really, really interesting person to tap into. Crystal is does a lot of really amazing things. She's also a coach. And so their book, Ask, along with some other things, you know, we, we've we been talking a lot about, especially for this month, really how to stay in a state of vitality, which is, you know, being in motion, right? And so in doing so, <clears throat> we're kind of adding a little elements. And the reason why I'm kind of blending some of this in for just a little while is because we're tired. <laughs> All of us are tired. Everybody has been dealing with this COVID thing. It's beating everybody else up. It's an election year. We're, we're, you know, we're just constantly surrounded by all of this stuff. And on top of it, we are dealing with everybody else's problems first and foremost before we actually get a chance to really deal with ours. So being that HR is predominantly uh, feminine driven industry, um, you know, we come to work and we deal with everybody's problems and then we go home and then we deal with everybody's problems, right? So understanding that with what's going on in the world right now, what's going on in the U.S., what's going on with, you know, everybody's respective companies, trying to find people to hire, trying to, you know, work with organizations to make sure that they got the right policies and processes and procedures in place. This isn't going away anytime soon. You know, you got to start looking inward a little bit and you have to start taking care of yourself. And so for the month of September, you're going to see a little bit more of that just for a little while coming into the fold. And mainly because, you know what, it's been what, March, April, May, June, July, August, it's been six months of just hardcore pushing it. And you know what, if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to brain fry and, and people are going to see it and they're going to lose confidence. You know, we don't want you to do that, right? So kind of starting to throw in just a little bit of taking care of you. We've got some other stuff coming up that we're going to talk about in the third segment. Um, that's actually pretty cool. We got the question of the day coming up as well. And um, I think you guys are going to like this interview. It's it, He's just so much fun to talk to and, and she's just wonderful, uh, just fantastic people. So before we go any further, folks, that the information that is available in this podcast is in fact for informational purposes only and not for the purpose of providing any form of legal advice. You should contact your attorney to obtain legal advice with respect to any particular issue that you may be having. If you don't have an employment attorney, go ahead and reach out to me and I might be able to refer one to you through our affiliates program and our friends over at Jackson Lewis. All right, so poster updates. <clears throat> Believe it or not, we don't have any poster updates and we haven't really had any 
since May of 2020. And part of the reason for that is that COVID-19 has really kept legislators out um, from, you know, pursuing the agendas uh, that they wanted to pursue. Really, they're just really focusing in on the pandemic at hand. But it's something that I'm continuing to watch and will keep you in the loop. Uh, basically, we, we talk about this, if it's like your first time listening in, we talk about this in the first episode of every month. And so if you do need to refresh your posters and you don't want to spend a lot or get a ton of junk mail that's trying to sell you unnecessary updates or make you concerned that you're out of compliance or telling you that you need this massive package of information in order to stay compliant for like OSHA or, you know, a bunch of different things. We've got some pals. They don't do that kind of stuff. They don't believe in selling their product under the guise of fear and that's that's not a good place to be anyway visit our friends over at labor law compliance center you can use the code posters 20 and you can get 25 percent off your posters now you know like i said if you need a refresh they've got everything that you need they've got all of the state posters they've got all the federal posters that you need plus they got the federal contracting poster they also have some additional COVID information too so you can use that code posters 20 to get 25 percent off on your purchase and you can also find a link uh, to it by clicking on the affiliates button down at the bottom of the home page of the best practices and dot work website and you click that on scroll down you'll find <clears throat> find our pals down there labor law compliance center and they'll hook you up no problem all right so employment law changes and headlines that are happening across the nation so Okay, here we go. Uh, we got some critical employment, excuse me, critical employee benefits and executive compensation consideration. We got an article that we're posting out on that. Some information regarding retirement plan sponsors as they must soon provide annual lifetime il income illustrations. So it's going to start getting complicated. The Department of Labor has also issued guidance on tracking hours worked by remote employees. So there's some really good juicy information there. The CDC has withdrawn post-travel quarantine recommendations. As you can see, we're starting to see shifts taking place. So one step closer to things coming back to normal based off of the studies and the information coming back to the CDC. Watch for it because it's starting to happen. There's an appellate court that has granted Uber and Lyft temporary relief from reclassifying drivers as employees. So this is the next battlefront in employment law, and it is the gig economy. Um, the gig economy has been something that I've been paying very close attention to simply because I found it fascinating. But this is the new battleground in employment law is gig economy. And over in California, <clears throat> there's a battle to classify uh, rideshare drivers under Uber and Lyft as employees, W-2 employees rather than 1099 contractors. All right, so uh, some additional information, some FAQs for employers on how to balance school reopenings and COVID-19 workplace leave. Also, the inner nine interim rule has allowed uh, approved foreign nationals to begin working as well. So again, another step into opening up this country fully and completely. Definitely take a look at the I-9 interim rule because temporarily employers are permitted to continue to verify uh, any documents for I-9 remotely, but that is only being evaluated on a 30-day basis. So uh, mid, about mid-month, mid-September, um, watch for any updates and you can certainly find them here. Court, uh, over there is a court decision that has restored the Affordable Care Act's discrimination protections for transgender patients as well. So you might want to check that out if you have a uh, transgender or LGBTQ uh, community working in your workplace. Also, we've listed some comprehensive FAQs for employers on hurricanes and other workplace disasters because, you know, not like we haven't had enough, right? <laughs> So we've already gone through a hurricane here in Virginia. Uh, we had about, what, 70, 80 mile an hour winds. So we, we got clipped pretty good uh, in the back end of July, and it's done. But you know what? It is still hurricane season. So, oh, yeah, all sorts of good stuff. Over in California, AB5 update. The AB2557 would amend the California Independent Contractor Law. There's some information out there for that. Also, local ordinance. Uh, including massive implications around Sonoma uh, County supplemental paid sick leave. Uh, and you'll be able to find some additional info there. Over in New Jersey, Wage Theft Act 
is back on back in the spotlight. There's been some guidance as employers uh, get back to business and what is being issued there. Also in Oregon, OSHA has released the draft of their COVID-19 temporary standard in place. And lastly, over in Washington State, <clears throat> the governor has created a COVID-19 food production workers paid leave program. And that is what we have as far as news across the nation. There are approximately 2,500 members of the U.S. Special Operations Community who transition out of active duty military service every single year. The Honor Foundation has dedicated its mission to serving these elite individuals on their journey to prepare for life once they take off the uniform. In the past few years, we've begun our own journey to reach this number, launching three physical campuses in San Diego, California, Virginia Beach, Virginia, and near Wilmington, North Carolina along with a virtual campus to reach members of the community anywhere on the planet. I spent 26 years in the special operations community as a SEAL. I graduated from THS program, I served on the board of directors, and now I'm proud to lead this organization into the future to continue assisting these transitioning service members and their families. Our dedicated team, our world-class program, and our incredible tribes of supporters are standing by to help THF alumni and future fellows and are committed to providing the best possible support system and resources to better serve this community. Our vision for the Honor Foundation is clear, to impact every transitioning service member from the U.S. Special Operations Enterprise through our programs and support, and to be a catalyst for overhauling the entire DOD transition program. It's a big task, but the community deserves it, and we're driving full steam ahead to make this a reality. If you've been inspired with what the Honor Foundation's done in the last five years, I welcome you all to join us as we craft the next chapter in defining what it means to serve others with honor for life. All right, guys, I hope you have a full cup of coffee or a full cocktail, whichever it is that you're going to need today, because this is going to be one of our fun, another fun episode. Uh, we've got returning author Mark Victor Hansen, and we have his beautiful wife, Crystal Dwyer Hansen, on the show again, because we just had so much fun with him the first time we came back. Hi. It's our pleasure to be here, because you are an absolute joy to the heart and soul. Yeah, and I, I feel like I've known you already, because Mark said so many great things about you, so I'm so happy to be here with you today. Aww. Well, thank you. I can't literally, if I smile anymore, my eyes will start watering. So <laughs> good. There you go. So we're, we're going to talk about something that's a little, it's a unique shift. I mean, it's, it'll involve HR. There's no doubt about it. But um, you guys wrote this awesome book that I've been reading. It's called Ask. And I wanted to get an opportunity to talk because, man, it's one of those books that just I was teasing Mark the last time he was on that he should just write a book for every word in the dictionary. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and clearly we started with the A's, right? But, um, <laughs> but it's such a, it starts off with a great story and it continues on with your theories and principles. And I don't want to steal anybody's thunder here, but my gosh, it reaches and permeates so many different areas of life, including using this to build you know, a path forward for your individual professional career as well. And of course, like I said, it was going to be an HR tie in here somewhere and that was it. So, but I would love for you guys to kind of, first off, Crystal, tell us a little bit about you since we haven't had the chance of talking to you, but then we'll get into the book. Right. So I am, a, I used to be in the real estate industry and then I transitioned into, I found that I spent so much of my time coaching people and, um, you know, giving them life plans and so forth. So I ended up becoming a transformational life coach, board certified hypnotherapist and opening, opening up a big practice. And I was having such great results with my clients that I wrote a book called Pure Thoughts for Pure Results. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, that was my first book. And when I was uh, considering, you know, who to publish the book, my mom called me one day and sent me to this. Um, she said, I got this email. You need to go to this other one-on-one conference. Um, there'll be publishers and publicists and Mark Victor Hansen will be there. And I was like, 
okay, mom, when is it? And she goes, it's the day after tomorrow. And I said, it's probably sold out. I can't go to that. And um, she goes, I was recently divorced. So she goes, just go call the guy. I'll watch the kids for you. You got to get this book out there. It's so good. So I, I call the promoter. He calls me right back. He's like, come over, Crystal. We have plenty of room. So and a day and a half later, I'm you know, fly from Scottsdale to LA. Mark's the keynote speaker. We see each other in the um, VIP lounge. And I'm all, I, the ironic thing is I'm like, I'm not even drinking because I'm going to be serious about my business and talk about my book. And this woman right next to me was very animated with her hands. She was from South America. Mark was surrounded. He was, uh, you know, about... 10 or 12 yards away from me, surrounded by this entourage of people. And I'm talking to a speaking coach. This woman whacks an entire glass of red wine on my white pants. Oh, no. Me, the per girl who decided not to drink, ends up with the, all the wine over me. Mark suddenly bursts, like breaks out of his crowd of people, comes over to me, grabs my hand and goes, I'm so sorry. Can I get you some, come with me. I think I can help you. I think I know where the club soda is. And he pulled me out of the room. And I was literally like, okay, wow. What just happened? <laughs> I mean, it must have been you, in my way. I think that was being called swept off your feet. I really, <laughs> it was. And it we had to have you write commentary for us. You're so cute. <laughs> it's so funny, Brenda. So we get outside the room. He finds the club soda. He's like, tell me about you. You just... There's just something about you. So I told him about my practice and the breakthroughs people were having and my new book. And he said, you know, there's something about you that I think could be so um, influential for an instrumental in helping women. I'd love to hear more, but I'm starving. Have you eaten? I hadn't eaten. So I said, he goes, would you like to go to dinner? But let's get off this property because I'm going to be surrounded all night with everybody who wants just five minutes of my time. So I run upstairs, call my mom. I was like, mom, I got to be really quick. Just want to check in on the kids. She's changing my pants because I got wine spilled on me, but you won't believe this. I'm going to dinner with Mark Victor Hansen. And my mother goes, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> you did, Mom? It was she was so funny. <laughs> Leave it to moms, right? <laughs> you yeah. know, you're I love your story. Uh, you know, and that but that's the cool part about life is that it is that the neat you you meet neat people when you just keep yourself open to the world and open to the possibility i mean i when i was <laughs> when i was 20 years old i met and dove with jerry garcia wow wow he's got and, one finger less I'm, i went diving with him in hawaii yeah i, I had jerry no garcia. idea who he was you didn't know who he was <laughs> When I saw him, I just like, yeah, right? No, get him, bum, bum. And not dead. Yeah, right. When I saw him, he was just, he had this, he had this big hair and this big head and all he was doing is just, bah, 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 and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the guy we have to look out for. And you'll be talking when we're underwater. No, he did also. He did some funny stuff that actually got me angry, and I growled at him. And he apologized. And when he realized that I had no idea who he was, he kind of strung me along. And eventually, it came out who he was, and I was so embarrassed. And he's like, "Are you kidding?" He said, "This is great." And then he teased me. He says, "Well, you must be an Eagles fan." And I'm like, "Well, I am." And that's the reason why I don't really know. <laughs> But, <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Yeah, but the story that she just did. Yeah. So so you know it's like nine thirty at night and it's a, we go to the best restaurant in Hollywood or that I knew of and the line's long and a hundred dollar bill won't get you in. <laughs> so we go up to the maitre d and he looks at her and he his mind's going fast and he says, "Okay, um, who is she?" Now remember we're doing ask. So I said I've always been asking and we say you're going to be a bold ask question. You don't recognize her? Yeah. <laughs> the guy's going nuts. He's, he, he does not know what to do with it. He's in a silly mood. And, and his mind's like, going through People Magazine, Insta Magazine. He looks familiar. Because <laughs> she's been a top model. So that, you know, and a lot of things, she understated who she is and her great talents and genius, which I, I'm glad to tell you about, which, but that's not right now. So the guy says, okay, I give up. Who is she? Now remember, we're both Danish, so I'm goofing around. I say, she's a queen of Denmark. <laughs> he says, no, she's not. And then all of a sudden he goes, oh my God, she is. Who are you? I said, back to questions. I said, who travels with a queen? 
He said, oh my God, you're the king. Hold on, I'll get your table. And we had a table like that. Oh I think they, they can't possibly believe it. Like, I'm thinking they they get the joke and all of a sudden we were being whisked back and I'm like, oh my gosh. Uh, I, think, I, don't, I think it's too late. I think we need to roll with this. Uh, I think we're just going to have a fun night. The, the houndstooth, you know, the chef with the houndstooth pants kept coming out like, I hope you guys are satisfied with the meal. We're like, oh, it's wonderful. This is what I do the best. <laughs> I mean, if I if I paid for it, like Jim Rowan and I says, you know, give t tip means to ensure proper service. Right. He says, tip $20 in advance, don't tip 20 at the end, yeah. and make sure they hover. But <laughs> I had this guy hovering because they thought we were the king and queen. And we're having, and ladies and gentlemen, what, because you can't see Brenda, well, yeah, you can't because it's a video, but we, you're supposed to have fun in life. Life's about having joy. And you gotta ask yourself, how do I maximize my joy? And part of that is let the inner silly, the inner, oh, love, yeah. the inner joy, the inner happiness out because we've all been beleaguered with this COVID this and COVID that. Oh, it's time to gosh. get out and get loose. Right. And you know, it's funny you're saying that because we all start out as children so happy and so joyful. And we start our book out like that. Yeah. Like this ability to ask, you know, when we're children. We want to know everything. You know, we have this endless curiosity. We want to know who, what, when, where, why. We never stop asking. And then we want more, more, more. We just keep asking for more. But you know what? That's human spirit. That's natural. Yeah. But over time with parents and school teachers and bosses and jobs and rejection and whatever mm -hmm. else it is, we go through, you know, that, that desire, the curiosity gets shut down the desire to ask people, the, the courage to ask for what we want gets shut down. And so we stop asking. And it's really sad when we give up on our asking journey. Mark and I talk about in the book, we call it the seven roadblocks to asking. And we can talk about those roadblocks, Brenda, but what we discovered in our research and all of the interviews we did is that every single person has at least one of those roadblocks yep. that keep us from asking for what we would want, for asking for the best life, asking yep. to find something better, asking to discover something better. And so this was one of the most fun projects Mark and I have ever done because there is so much to this. It's, it's a simple tool that we all were born with, but we all need to start paying attention to it and rekindle it so we can bring our lives back to this state yep. of joy mm -hmm. and wonder and manifestation and accomplishment and really alignment with everything we're supposed to become, which is why we said the subtitle is the bridge from your dreams to your yep. destiny, because we all have those great dreams in our heart, but over time those get shut down. And so yep. asking is the yep. way we rekindle those dreams and, you know, question by question, answer by answer, we start moving again toward our, our ultimate destiny which is so important for each one of us and what's cool is that when you when you really get into this <clears throat> into this conversation and what it is is that to get from your dream to the end result of whatever your destiny it's all about living in possibility because when you're living in possibility you're never stuck it's like if you feel stuck get, get into motion because that's how you just feel unstuck when you you know if you feel like you're not learning something you don't know something or you don't feel like you're you know in a position to where you're you know you're being fairly compensated or you're being fully utilized well go do something about it and then that gets you unstuck doesn't mean that you're going to get to the end result like in four hours but it means that in four hours you're going to be in motion of some kind and what comes with this is also what you guys are about ready to talk about, which I don't want to steal your thunder on. Which is what? You the want book. to do the fable of Michaela, which Crystal Oh, no, she, well, she just means the whole thing. Oh, the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, the, the yeah. seven. The seven that you guys yeah. were just starting yeah. to go so into. So the seven roadblocks. Let's just go right. through those. Okay, <clears> go for it. Is unworthiness, right? And that is just conditioning from our childhood. And it can exist at such a subtle level. But it just kind of, there's a subtle level of feeling like we just don't deserve better. You know, so, so we don't ask. We don't ask for the question. Yep. We are not as curious. We don't ask for what we want. The second one is naivete. And this one's an important one. I tell a story in the book about we uh, hired this beautiful Filipina woman to take care of our children because my babies were born 16 months apart. 
and it was a lot, it was a lot. She was so wonderful. She'd come every day and she'd cook these amazing, you know, dinners, dishes from her homeland and, and helped us out so much and loved my children so much. But um, she came one morning and with this fruit, cut it up on a plate and, and handed it to me. It was this juicy orange fruit. And she said, taste this. I bit into it. And I'm like, this is the best fruit I've ever tasted. in the whole time. What is this? And she goes, it's a mango. And I was like, a mango? How come I've never had a mango before? I've traveled all through Europe. I considered myself to be really worldly. But I never, for whatever reason, had a mango. I grew up in Idaho where there are lots of potatoes and no mangoes, right? <laughs> and so I was like, where did you get this? I want to get some. And she, I'm thinking she imported them from the Philippines. You know? <laughs> it's super exotic. She goes, they're at the grocery store. At the A&P. <laughs> I'm like, all this time, I've been walking past the mangoes. Why? because I'm naive. I don't even know they're there. So I don't even see them and I don't even ask about them, right? How many other things in life am I missing because I'm not asking, because I'm not curious, because I'm not looking for something new. It's that childlike curiosity, looking, wondering, asking, you know, that enriches our life so much. Am I passing opportunities? Because I'm just naive. Am I passing people that could be some of the most amazing partners, friends, connections mm. that I could ever, um, imagine you know so that's a really important one naivete then the next one is doubt it's just sort of a subtle you know you yep. know you know maybe you should ask you know maybe you should explore something but you just doubt the outcome so it's just this subtle gray area of just you know never ending doubt and a lot of people carry that they just don't doubt the outcome is going to be okay so they just don't even go there um, the next one is excuses and a lot of that has to do with stubborn pride and I'm sure you've known those people. We've all known those people. No, never met them. Right? <laughs> we were like, no, I don't need, I don't need any help. Not in HR. You know? Goodness sakes. Aren't the people in HR all perfect? Yeah, like all those people you deal with. People who won't ask for help. People won't ask for direction. Won't ask for advice. Don't need it. They're just, they can figure it out. They're never wrong. Never wrong. And sadly, they will miss every opportunity to in life, because if you're too stubborn to even say, you know, even asking, you know, someone, where did I mess up? Did, is there some, could you give me some, some feedback, some honest feedback about what I might've done that might not have worked? Some people are just too stubborn. They make the excuse. They know it. They got it. You're never going to change them. If you can recognize that and get over, over it, it changes life dramatically. Um, the next one is fear. And that is just kind of the sheer terror of rejection, right? Yeah. So many people are afraid to ask because they're afraid that they'll be told no. And that fear of rejection is almost like a fear that you're going to lose love somehow because human beings need love so much. And, you know, if, if somehow for some people for rejected, it means like we're losing love. Um, next one is pattern paralysis where you've seen these people. I know Brenda, where it's the same thing day after day, year after year, and nothing works. They continue the same pattern. They complain about it. You hear about it again and again, but they will not recognize the pattern. They don't ask what was wrong with the pattern. They don't examine the pattern through questioning and they just keep living it over and over and keeping themselves in their same misery day after day after day. And the final one is disconnection. And that is really a sad one, honestly, because that's a state of apathy. It's where you've literally become disconnected from those dreams in your heart. That's sad. Yeah. None of us should become disconnected. We need to rekindle that curiosity, rekindle our ability to ask for what we want in life and come alive, come alive. Like you were saying, that is what keeps the journey vibrant and keeps you in the game. Yeah. And you know, and you're right. Any one of us has at least one of these things and it's all based around limiting self-beliefs, which are killers. The limiting self-beliefs are the, are the killers of dreams. And I mean, just take a look at fear in and of itself. Cause we talked about this, Mark, when you were on before you had 146 people say no to the chicken soup for the soul book. And I'll bet you there's a 146 people out there that are feeling like real idiots right now. <laughs> By the way, I've had a lot of them come up to me and say, boy, that's the biggest mistake I made. And, and uh, one of the mistakes, let me just do the fun one. So, so we're selling 20,000 copies of chicken soup a week, and, and that's enough to get on the bestseller list in New York Times, which is what determines who, what bookstores buy. And so I called the lady at, at New York Times, who's a Harvard woman like Dr. Canfield Jack is, and I thought, wow, this is interesting. 
you know, she wants to uh, play with me. Let's uh, play. So she said, sir, we don't take multi-authored books. I said, you're absolutely sure. She said, yeah, I'm sure we don't take multi-authored <laughs> books. I said, positive. She said, I'm positive. I just told you. I said, you got the Bible. It's got 66 authors unless we had maps. <laughs> it's a whole lot more if you're reading maps. So you got to have fun with this thing and you got to know how to ask questions and be professional at it and, and still do it with tongue in cheek and have yeah. fun like you. And that's why Crystal and I, when we looked at everybody in these 80 countries we've been to around the world, we met great people, professional people, educated people, personable people. But the difference between those who are little minor successes and those who are major, major successes is one thing only. They become masters at asking. And we're saying, hey, wait a second. If people will read our book, ask two things. Ask the bridge for your dreams or destiny, and you can only get it at Amazon now because most bookstores aren't open, which breaks our heart. But then number two is for free, we want you to go to the word. We've created the biggest book club. It's free called askthebookclub.com. And once a month, Crystal and I are going to create people that become masters at, at fulfilling their destiny and asking for what they want. And forgive me if I, without letting you talk, but yesterday, Crystal looked through 121 letters of people who have already joined it. This is letters of people that couldn't just join and not and shut up. These people all wrote her and so said, tell, tell them what's well, happening. Well, it's just so touching. So a lot of these people have, you know, either read the book or, you know, heard us on a podcast. And, and we're just so thankful that we did release the book at the time because we, the book was ready to release on April 28th smack dab in the middle of like shut down right we're like yeah. oh, well and all the books were getting canceled and or canceled or postponed and we had a meeting with our publisher and thankfully we all agreed you know what bookstores aren't going to be open it's not the ideal time but amazon still works this is a message that people need more than ever right now and we made this decision and i think we were really guided to do that because i got sucked in i had so much to do and i had no time to read these letters but just it really warmed my heart and I thought these people took the time to write this and how much of an effect it had on their lives you know and how much yeah. it changed them and how excited they were to keep moving along in the asking journey because it's giving them new hope you know new insights and that's important mm -hmm. that's important it and, is you know you part of our destiny isn't always wrapped around money how much money we can make you know part of our destiny is how much can we influence people in a positive way? How much can we raise people up? And especially for us, we know that's part of our destiny. That's why we'll probably never ever retire. People are like, why do you guys keep working? And yeah. um, we just, we, it, it's because life is fun and vibrant and there's more to do and there's more to express. And I think, yeah. you know, we, we say in the book, there are three channels through which to ask. And those three channels are equally important to learn there. Ask yourself, ask others and ask God. Each one affects your life dramatically. And the ask yourself part is that reflective journey, you yeah. know, really going inside. If you don't take time to do the ask yourself part, you just can't break free of the issues or the problems or the feelings, the negative feelings you're feeling. It takes that time to do that introspective journey. And so when you go into that space, Mark and I spend an hour every day, you know, in prayer and meditation, asking each other questions, um, you know, asking ourselves questions to get that clarity because that starts to sculpt your day and yep. therefore sculpt your life. And um, when you ask those questions, you know, we, there are like three critical phases uh, of asking that you need when you're asking yourself. And that is, you know, where am I right now? And all the little questions that come under that, what's working, what's not working, you know, what, what could be better. And the second part of that, the second phase is where do I want to be? Yep. And then the third phase is what specific action do I need to take to get there? Yep. And if you can ask those questions and answer them of yourself, you will start to see, you know, you ask a question, you get an answer, you get a solution, you get an illumination, a plan starts to form suddenly you're a different person than you were yesterday yep. and life feels better. So yeah, yeah, it's just a really amazing journey. And I'll let you comment to that, Brenda. Yeah. It comes back into, it's so hard right now, going back to what you were saying earlier, <clears throat> it's so hard to 
have a positive outlook because everything that's being flung at us is negative. I, I mentioned it in another episode. It's like, I think if we shut the media down for we three, you know, three days, 60% of our issues as a world will be solved. And uh -huh. <clears throat> it's just terrible, but it's hard. And you have to, you have to find ways to separate yourself. And then, you know, when you're in a position like what we do, where you're in seat as HR, you're, you don't deal with your issues. You deal with everybody else's. You deal with the company issues. You deal with regulatory compliance issues. You deal with, you know, Johnny and Susie who can't seem to show up on time and, you know, <laughs> you know, and right. And, and, you know, and the boss is, you know, pulling their hair out and they're like, I don't understand why this is, you know, and it's just like, and your problems are the very last ones. And one thing, and you're going to laugh when I show you this. So back, I started this, I'm trying to find the date that I did it, September 25th of 2019. Would have been my 20th wedding anniversary had I still been married. And I sat down and I took, so I was listening to a podcast by um, <clears throat> an interview by Steve Harvey. And he talked about, he says, if you want to know what you want in your life, you have to, you have to figure that out. You have to write it out. So he challenged the listeners to write down 300 things that they wanted. And let me tell you something, it took me a long time to come up with 300 items, but that's what this book is right here. I am a little bit of an overachiever. I came up with 311. And... <laughs> But what's great is that that's a form of ask. It's, it's going back to understanding what you want. And there's many ways of doing this. But I wrote down 311 things that I wanted for myself. And I had two of my girlfriends do it with me. And they're writing down all this stuff for their kids. And they're telling me about it. I said, stop. I said, you're wanting that for somebody else, which is great as being a mother. This is for you. What do you want? Because... Right. At 18 years, <laughs> you got an eviction notice to serve. So what are you going to do for yourself? And they're like, oh my gosh, I, I got to get out of it. You know, it just, it dawned on them. It's not, maybe it's not naivete, but maybe it's just self-actualization is that I keep thinking about everybody else and I fail to put my needs and my wants first. Correct. So three things real quick. First of all, my first book was called Future Diary, where I asked 128 questions that people fill out. And even, you know, 40 years later, people are writing me saying that book's changed their life. So yeah. Steve Harvey did the right thing. Second of all, Steve Harvey, who says his best friend is our friend, Joel Olstein, he said he wrote, because he was, he was an abused kid, as you know, and yeah. wrote his goals and, and put them in his uh, dresser drawer under his socks. And no one ever saw that he wanted to be a big movie star. He wanted to be a comedian. He wanted yeah. to stand up and do TV. And God bless Steve Harvey for doing that. I get goosebumps saying that. And then number three, is, is uh, I always ask you for something. So this is one of those crazy asks. Go for it. I wrote, and, and I did a set of tapes called How, How to Think Bigger Never Thought You Could Think. And I said, everybody write down, I only say 101 goals, you know, and then when you get them, write down victory. Don't cross them out. I got the milk. I got the eggs. I got the butter. I got the right. girl. I, I got the girl, whatever. Yeah. Send me a copy because I want to put together a book of everybody else's goals with permission, but with, with your name or without your name in case you don't want you know, if you write down all the ideal things, like when I got divorced, I wrote down literally 267 things. We put it in a book, uh, the chicken soup for the anniversary 20th soul. I wrote, you know, how to find your love mate. And I wrote down, we had to have exactly the same values. We had to have spiritual values. If we both yeah. had kids, our kids had to get along together. Yep. She had to love my business. I had to love hers. She had to love travel because once upon a time, we traveled a lot. <laughs> like right now, we'd usually be yeah. in Europe or Asia. And, you know, because a little hot here in Scottsdale. Like <laughs> only 115 degrees so outside. You spontaneously combust. <laughs> yeah, right. right. And if you go out with thin leather shoes, your, your feet feel like they're eggs on a grill. Sure. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But that's it. But, that, but that's... That's how you start the manifestation of, of everything is right. because it does it. That's what, going back to what I was saying is like when you're in motion, it takes away those blockers. You, the, you know, the, the, oh gosh, the self-defeating conversation that you have. If you take a look at the deserve, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. The roadblock deserve. And this is a, this was an interesting conversation. Um, I do a, a 
show every Tuesday. It's called The Real HR Show. It's with a woman named Suzanne Lucas. She is known as the evil HR lady, and she writes for Inc. Magazine, for Inc.com. Oh, wow. She's written a thousand, over a thousand blogs for Inc.com since like 2007. So she's well known and uh, she's a lot of fun. But one of the things that she, you know, came out to say is that women and men, when it comes to negotiating their positions, and we'll just say for at work, they, women don't know. Well, first off, women won't go for a position unless they feel they're qualified for it. Guys take all the risk in the world, right? They'll tell you, yeah, I can do that. And then they'll go figure out how to do it. And I'm, I'm very much like that. I'll say like, well, I'll be honest with you. I've never done this, but I know where to look to find the answer. Let me go. Right. Right. And I'm good with that. But I was, I had proposed a, um, a speaking for a speaking gig on how women don't know how to negotiate for what they want, especially out of a salary, out of a compensation package. Some do. And the ones who are successful in life have figured that out. For the most part, women don't know how to do this because negotiating is not in our DNA. We are nurturers. We accept the world as it is. Men are just like, I'm worth more than that. They just, it's just a natural, it's just a natural of who we are. It's just our makeup. So it's really interesting. But even still, men have don't deserve in, in their mindset as well. Right. Oh boy. What you're saying is so true, um, Brenda. And I think part of it is the way women's and men's brains are so different. They say, yeah. one of my friends who's a psychologist says that, um, you know, between the right and left, left hemispheres of the brain, um, men, women have a super highway that connects, connects their emotional brain with their logical brain. Right. Yep. And men have a dirt path. <laughs> <laughs> our super highway so you know we're, we're thinking logically well I could do all this but then the emotions get involved but you know have I fulfilled this like all of the, those emotional things like checking in with our, ourselves and you know all this thing goes back and forth it's like spaghetti that you pour sauce on it all runs together right the man is like an egg compartment like they put this egg there yeah I want that job I'm gonna get it they don't connect with any of their insecurities or anything that happened or any times that you're as much, not as much. I mean, you know, some men do feel, you know, the deservedness is an issue, but women, I think it is more profound in women, which is why we need to sit down with ourselves and ask ourselves what our strengths, our gifts, you know, um, everything is revealed through asking, like even the list that you were talking about, making that list of things that you want, you can't do that without saying, what do I really want? Yeah. What is my ideal life? And, you know, we talk about we're, we're creating a program called Ask for Riches. Well, part of that is using um, the power of imagination. We have a part in the book, uh, Ask, that says prepare to be a good asker. So there are three first parts to that. That is number one, belief. Mm-hmm. You have to believe that those answers are out there for you. And you have to believe you deserve them, right? Yep. And the second part is action. Okay. Like you were talking a bit, you can't just sit there and go, Oh, I'm asking for this and I'm asking for that. And then just sit on the couch and think, wait for it to happen. Right. You need to put your asking journey into action. So once you get these ideas or you ask yourself something and you know, an illumination idea, a thought comes, you need to act on it. You need to pick up that phone and call that person that you thought of that said, Oh, this person would be the one that would have the answer for me or the connection. You put that in action every single day, every single day. And the third one is imagination because your imagination is so powerful. And, you know, a lot of us don't take time to use the imagination. We are watching the news and how awful the world is. And we're letting that program our minds. We're letting this outside negative stuff. If we shut that off, like you said, and use the power of our imaginations. And what Mark and I always say is, go to the nth degree, right? Go to the ultimate scenario. So like in success, it's like, I'm going to imagine that right now I am my ultimate success. I am myself as my ultimate success, whatever that picture is in your mind of what your ultimate success is, right? And then engineer that backwards with questions like, what am I doing each day? Who am I talking to? Yeah. How do my days go every day? You know? What is my, what am I focusing on every day as my ultimate success? Yeah. All of these questions will 
start to reveal and also create the perfect architecture for you to become your ultimate best. And yeah. it's really a cool and magical process. I think, you know, we tend to, as adults, as we've, as we've supposedly grown responsible, um, <laughs> we've, we've, right. we've, we've robbed ourselves uh, the privilege of imagination, you know, and, and the world kind of robs us of that a little bit too. And that's where we get jaded because we're so used to hearing, no, you can't do this. No, you can't be this. You know, you have to follow this set of rules. You have to live in this structure. And, um, and when you, when you, when you get to that point, you're so stymied that you do accept the limits you do. That's where you do start to disconnect. That's where, you know, you get yourself into this, you know, you talked, you talked about it called um, pattern paralysis. You, you know, I, I know people my whole life who are still sitting on the same bar stool complaining about the same things that they've been complaining about since 1989. And it's like, you know, okay. Alan Parsons project isn't playing on the main stage anymore, guys. I mean, <laughs> <you know? laughs> Yeah, your football yeah. win and your cheerleading didn't. Yeah. Touch. That was back in high school or university. And I think you're supposed to have a real job. <laughs> <I> <laughs> the world. And you're supposed to quit doing the past and not even just do the present. But what we're saying is, especially during the time here where the yeah. yin and yang, the 6,000-year-old symbol, the greatest crisis equals the greatest opportunity. Look, there is a tomorrow. And we got to start imagining it. Yes. And going to a bigger, better, brighter, more glorious, more opportune. Not only for ourselves, but we've got to, if you're really good at HR, you've got to see where that person is. In, in all the big companies, like yesterday, we're dealing with the top guy in Silicon Valley. I'll just tell you on a podcast, which I'm going to ask you to go on with him. But in, in technology, they're, think, they're hiring guys thinking three or four generations of technology forward. It's exceeding, a guy's name's Matt, so I'll get back to you on him. But the point is, it's exceedingly exciting this guy just opened up a looming future of a lot of stuff that's going to happen. And, and yeah. we're going to have automobiles that go from 2D to 3D in a very short time, within like two years, right? You're going to have Uber taxi once we're open again and get rid of all the nonsense that's going on. I'm going to press it, take me to Brenda's house, and it'll go, <laughs> and I'm there, right? Isn't that a little cool? Jetsons thing. I think it would be cool to do the pneumatic tube, you know, go from state to state in a pneumatic tube, just... Oop, there you, are. you love what you love the boring company, which what a name a boring company. Poor Tesla guy, Elon Musk owns a boring company. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, for those of you listening, you don't know what that is. He's got an underground tube from Washington to New York. He's got one from his place in, in Santa Monica to L.A. to his place, and 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 what he's doing is he's doing them under these houses, and it's a wonderful concept if you're not claustrophobic. Now the trouble is. The two of us are massively claustrophobic. <laughs> so if you get too tight an elevator for us, we'll walk the stairs, 80 floors. Yeah, hopefully that uh, that tube moves so fast, you blink your eyes and you're there and you wouldn't have to worry about it too much, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> so but I wanted to say, Brent, just to what you said, if you think about it, you guys, the our economy is nothing more than a bunch of individuals. It's all of us as individuals coming together it's a bunch of companies coming together to creating this, creating this thing we call economy. So it depends on our imagination, the success yeah. of our economy. If we get shut down by what's happening outside of us and, and don't come inside our own hearts and minds and start to create a really strong picture of the future, a strong picture of ourselves, then we're going to manifest what, what they're trying to create for us out there. We need to take charge. We need to be you know, collectively, the strength that pulls our yep. economy back, pulls each one of us as individuals, businesses together. You know, we have the power to do it. Americans have always come through and we will again. So we just need to keep this positive mindset and keep asking the questions that get us there. Yeah. And the HR person can inspire the leadership, the CFO, the CEO, yeah. and say, hey, wait a second, what is your vision for the future? So I'm hiring the people that can fulfill that. And yes. the, best example right now is where Kodak was a dead company because they created digital photography. Steve Jobs came in and says, excuse me, if I got this right, you didn't patent it? Said, thank you. And goes in and crashes yeah. a $38 billion company because they didn't know their own assets. And that's, ladies and gentlemen of, of HR, you are more important 
than ever in history, as far as I'm concerned. But you have to set the image. You have to read our book, Ask, and write down what is it is possible for you to do? What is it possible for your company to do? What is it you ask everyone? Like she wrote down 300 things she should do because Steve Harvey asked that question. But what are here? how do we make every division of the company 10% better? And where are the 10% that we're weak that we're going to have to have shored up and bring somebody in that is really a master maestro at fixing that? And, and you've got to – let me go even bigger. One of the guys, two guys that we like, we're, we won the Horatio Alger Award, which means we came from rags to rich and, and are excessively philanthropic, and you get it in the Supreme Court. And two of our colleague winners couldn't graduate at 13 years old of high school. They, they got kicked out of school for being stupid. Neither guy is stupid. One is named Quincy Jones. He made a little guy named Michael Jackson sort of successful. And then the other guy is David Foster, who he started with a little girl named Barbara Streisand and went to a girl named Celine Dion and another one named Whitney Houston. I know you don't know any of those names out there in musical land, but the fact of the matter is there is no class in high school that tells you you're going to become world's greatest orchestrators. Now, you may like some other orchestrator better than the two we have to love and know and are befriended with. We're closer to David, but Foster, and if you haven't listened to his music, talk to your, I can't name those things because of the musical launch in the backyard here. Yeah. But if you start listening to that music, he, <laughs> David Foster created Hitman. Yeah. You know, I know every song he's done. But you, I'm saying, Mr. and Mrs. HR, you are the orchestrator of the company at levels that you aren't even considering. And, and Brenda's always asked me to expand your vision, expand your hope, expand your opportunity, expand your thinking, and understand that when you expand your company, you're going to get to hire more people. You're going to escalate, elevate, and get paid more. Yep. And, and the time when you know when to do that is when you cannot see beyond your own day. That's the time to start engaging in the questions. Now, there's also you you can also like ask the question so many times that you kind of burn out your own imagination and that's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is that when you do feel stuck and you feel like you can't move forward and you know, you know, you know, just like your boss seems to be driving you crazy and the CEO of the company just seems to be nothing but a big walking complaint because he's frustrated. That's when you you do that paradigm shift. Just take the chance on the paradigm shift. And it's amazing what happens when you do it. Right. There is no mechanism, no mechanism that has the ability to reveal what is hidden by yeah. asking. Okay. And it's, it's yep. like a language of its own. It's the only language the, the universe can deliver a solution and understanding and awareness to. So keep that in mind. You feel stuck. You feel awful. You feel like you're not moving. You don't have answers. You always have questions. Start, sit down with yourself and ask them. Yeah. And then let me do one more thing, Brenda. Because sure. what you're saying is the boss is shouting because he's living in the land of complaint because he's worried about shareholders and stakeholders. And hum -hum. Mm. All legitimate and spouses and kids and the kids of COVID and all the new compliance issues that you guys get inundated with daily with regs, regulations. And and so what we're here's what we've been on one show. You're the only other show we've been on twice. But Scott Carson was crazy and said, you guys got to come back. So we went back. And he said, listen, everybody, a million of you are out there listening, and you know somebody that's depressed, and this may be, now I know none of your HR people would have anybody that's possibly depressed, despondent, disconsolate, upset, or suicidal, but he said, I want you to buy 10 books of Mark and Crystal's Ask the Bridge of Dreams and give them away. And yeah. it's amazing the amount of letters that Crystal was talking about, and I, you know, I, I don't know that it's right to share this, but my heart and soul and yours are so aligned that I don't mind saying Hey, look, if it fits, have the company buy it for everybody because everybody's right. feeling uptight with sequestration, yes. uptight that it may be dangerous to go to a restaurant, uptight that you can't travel, uptight that we can't do commerce like we've always done. Yeah. Right. And, you know, to that point, we've had some companies, like some real estate companies around here, um, when they heard us on their podcast, they bought a, bo the, a book for all their, all their employees. And they're all going through it together because it's helping everybody. It raises yep. everybody up. When you have your buy the book and have your own little book club discussion, then everybody kind of gets it together and, and everybody rises together. And so it's a great strategy for everyone. Yeah. Well, from a, from a facilitation standpoint, um, you know, I'm sorry, but nobody loves to talk more about anything else other than themselves. 
Correct. That's right. <laughs> no, it's true. Cause we're all trying to discover what's next for us. You know? yeah. Yeah. We're all world's foremost authority on ourselves. And that's why that's right. we said, look, there's three kinds of ask, ask yourself, yep. ask others, yep. Yep. And ask God. And for some of these people, they need to, as, as HR superstar professionals that you're dealing with, they need to understand one of the questions we say is you got to say to yourself 400 times, God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? God, right before you go to sleep 400 times, God, what's your destiny for me? And then you got to have pen and paper next to the bed and tell your spouse or your sweetheart, hey, honey, uh, we're going to wake up here in the middle of the night because Mark suggested he gave me a thought command that I will wake up. Well, last night I woke up at 3, 3, 4. So, and I wrote, you write down all the stuff that comes through because the divine works in the subconscious, so right, right? and it, it will unfold stuff that is miraculous. And every one of us has breakthroughs for ourselves, breakthroughs for our family. If you'll do that little question, and breakthroughs for your company, corporation, and if you do that, we can help the whole country get back online in alignment. Yeah. yeah, and I think probably one of the most frustrating things about today's environment right now is that there is no mechanism to accurately forecast anything nothing no i know nothing the tremendous am amount of uncertainty tremendous yes. uncertainty and so you know that's why the asking questions is going to move us forward yes um, we need to keep digging we need to keep exploring we need to understand what what are the opportunities in the future how is the country changing I mean, there are some really positive changes in some ways, like we're bringing, you know, the supply chain is coming home. Lots of opportunities for companies in this area. If we ask the right questions and, and pursue the answers to those, um, manufacturing's coming home. We're going to do all of our own, um, you know, medicine and medical supplies and all of those things. Those are huge opportunities for coming back online companies. Yeah. Coming back online. And, and uh, so Let's start asking more questions. Let's let's start pursuing uh, the pathway to those answers and and see where it leads us. Because I think it's going to lead us, like Mark said before, the depth of, of adversity is also matched by the the uh, magnitude of opportunity ahead. And so, if we can stay positive as America's companies and and individuals, and just keep that, keep moving forward, keep asking the questions, keep you know staying together and supporting one another, I think um, we're going to be very successful. Yeah. And it's when we fall out of the conversation that we start backsliding. Yep. So this is, this is a continuous effort. And the point there is we've only had two depressions in America and we don't want another one, but 1898, what came out of it? The automobile, internal combustion engines, a little guy named Henry Ford figured it out yeah. and changed the world. Another guy, uh, named uh, Thomas Elva Edison created something called electricity. What a concept, right? And then uh, the two little brothers that were bicycle guys said, look, if birds can fly, why can't we? And her father, of course, said if man was meant to fly, he would be born with wings, which, you know, you go, dad, dad, listen, we just went to Kitty Hawk. We did this little thing. And look, <laughs> and then and then out of the 29 to 39, to, and by the way, we had the roaring 20s right after that. Of course. Yep. So what I'm saying is, we're going to go into the greatest roaring boom and everybody in HR is going to be affected, but you've got to be ready for it in advance. You need to read a book. And obviously I believe the self-help action book. I've written 309 bestsellers. Would I like you to read all of my books? Some of you, you told me more women in HR than men. Most of you've been reading Nora Roberts, who I think the world of and is a great friend or somebody, but it's time to read some self-help action books. And I want you to read mine first. Well, not everybody <laughs> reads Nora. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. And then, and then the 29 to 39, you know, what came out of it? We had the computer come out of it, the television come out of it, the rocket ship yep. come out of it, and a little game called Monopoly, which all of us are playing yep. still. Yeah, and it's, it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of this. You know, we were already seeing things coming out of this. People are figuring out, you know, the big word is pivot. People have been thinking, you know, figuring out. It's like, all right. Uh, how do we deal with this? You know, and then they, they shift and they change and they get creative. And, you know, I, I think it's, it's going to be interesting seeing what manifests out of this. Yep. It hasn't happened yet, but it's going to. We'll 
we'll get what, there. I, I think it is happening. We, we're dealing with some companies that are going from B to B to B to C and they've asked us, we're consultants, as you know, mm -hmm. I paid, thank God. And they're saying, hey, wait a second, can you, can you show us how to do that? Because you're world's greatest uh, marketing mind. I, I wrote a whole book on with the world's top marketing guy our, who's got the same birthday as myself, Jay Abraham, how to grow rich in your niche. And, and so, but you know, I've sold more books than anybody alive. And then we did $2 billion worth of books and a billion dollars worth of licensing. So obviously I have an imagination, like Crystal was saying, imagination is the only room I say that has no limitation. Isn't that yep. a cute line I wrote? And so the, the point is, you know, and that's what Christ said, my, my home, my mind has many mansions. If it weren't so, I would have been the first to tell you. But insofar where it is so, where I am, your imagination is, there you are also. So each of us in HR can create, and, and obviously I had 387 employees at my Zenith, you know, and I tried to, to have a picture, an imagination, an idealization. I said, every one of you has got to contribute to the greatness of the organization. We did 100 million a year with that few employees, which is a wonderful amount of business. And what I'm saying is every one of us has got to help sculpt it, but the HR person can go up to the CEO and the CFO and, and wake them up the same as yeah. level. Most HR people would assume, well, the boss should tell me what to do. No. Today, we all have to be independent, creative, because the two reasons we're alive are number one is to create and the other is to contribute. And the only way Crystal and I can find to do that is by mastering this task called asking and then again, we'd ask everyone to go to askthebookclub.com and join us once you've read the book. And we start in August and, and we want to help you master this fine art and science and philosophy and principles of asking. Yeah, I love it. Even Einstein said that imagination is the preview of things to come. What a great That's line. Right. He was my teacher's teacher, as you know. Bucky Fuller was Albert's best student. So that was, and he also said, you, you know, you can't ask a fish to climb a tree because a fish will look stupid, right. you know, and that's true. <laughs> I have never heard that. That's awesome. Isn't that wonderful? Because what happens is that, back, back to what I was saying about David Foster and Quincy Jones, yeah. how do you predict that these guys can hear music and create music that no one's ever heard before that'll enchant you and take you to places in imagination? Because, look, all of us, what Crystal just said to you is imagination is an inside out game. It's got to be inside your mind. Some the, the corporations are the lengthening shadows of the idea of the men and women that run them and work in them, right? We all know that some from Peter Drucker. But the point, or maybe we don't, but now you do. Now it's we not, do. Yeah. And he said, look, the corporation makes money if it's innovative yeah. and if it's marketing, which is obviously what That's we right. are talking about here. And we've got to have the innovation to have new profits in the future. So we can hire more people. So HR is, is, is finding the people that are best in class or that can be best in class in the future. Yeah. Right. And I want to share one more quote by Albert Einstein since we're talking about him. He's so he's best about asking. If I had one hour to solve a problem and my life de depended on the solution, I would spend the first four, 45 minutes determining the, pro sorry, 55 minutes determining the proper questions to ask. For once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in five minutes. minutes. Yep. Once I know the proper question, I could solve the problem in five minutes. So really spend time forming your questions, asking the right questions, and you will be able to solve anything. Absolutely. Any problem. This has been awesome again, as always. Yeah. I like it. We I loved it. Oh, this has been great. I'm so glad you guys have come on. This, I think this is exactly the, bo the, the boost in the arm and the shot that people really need is to just, just to get out of the funk. We do yeah, too. We and do and too. we're thankful that God gave us the ability to create a book called Ask and that it is being so bountifully well received. Yeah. Brenda, thank you for having us on and letting us uh, join your listeners today. We hope to hear from them and they can find us on social media if they want to reach out. We love it when people reach out. I'm at Crystal Dwyer Hansen on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all, you know, YouTube, everything. And of course, he's at Mark Victor Hansen at all of the above. So yeah. reach out to us. We love to stay connected. Yeah, and if you go to my website, we got a free book for you and some videos to watch. And, and you can go online and watch us. And we just, we want to stay, we want to get everybody, old Zig Ziglar said, a check up from the neck up and stay positive by, based on what you said a minute ago, you no more than 15 minutes of negative news a day. You don't need to know every word that they say. No, you don't.
And one last gift, I, I'll mention mine too. At Crystal Vision Life, you can go get a free audio. Uh, it's a guided visualization audio, really powerful. It's called Purge Messy Thinking. Oh, for, very cool. Yeah, creating pure thoughts for pure results. Um, that's at crystalvisionlife.com, free audio. Um, it's really helpful to people because we all do that messy thinking um, and going into that closed eye you know, visualization process sometimes is easier than someone trying to do it by themselves. So. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, guys, so much. Thanks, Brenda. A delight right. as always. Thank you, Brenda. So if you've been listening to the show for a little while, you've heard me talk about, especially in the Next Gen Women in HR Facebook, you've heard me say at some point that you need to take care of yourself first in order to take care of everything else. So September, I mentioned, you know, if you've been listening to the show, I've been kind of ramping up for this. I've kicked off a new features part of the show, and it really is a segment that is about wellness and that can really be adapted for any professional listening to the show. Um, I'm going to have subject matter experts as well as featured products that are effective and easy to incorporate in your day. But you know what? These are little changes. And back in April of this year, <clears throat> you know, I was faced with some stuff and I made a decision to make a positive change in my life. Um, you know, just like everybody else, I was under the gun trying to learn all this COVID stuff and then, you know, trying to figure out the new laws with the FFCRA and teaching about it. And to be honest with you, in that, in like the like March and April, I wound up speaking to over 3,500 small businesses in just two short months, and it was it was great, it was awesome. But you know what? I saw the stress that it was taking, and I saw what was going on with other people, and not to mention I had fallen and I was still recovering from a dislocated elbow. But since then, I have been successful at losing about 25 pounds through just making better life changes. That's it. And it's something that I am now really a full, full on believer that we can all do by making just one or two small adjustments. You know, if you want to, you know, you know, make sure you're out there doing what you can to feel better, work better and be more efficient is something that's very important to me because honestly, that was a very stressful time. And when we're dealing with stress, our tunnel, we, our vision starts to close in. Well, this is a way of really kind of opening up the aperture. And as we learned, there's a great number of benefits of using different types of hemp-based CBD products to help balance life, control stress, anxiety, and pain, and recovery from strenuous physical and emotional um, activities. It's a big stress controller. And I am a full-on believer in hemp-based C uh, CBD, and I've been using it now for my own personal health for about a year, two years now. And this week, I want to tell you about a new product that I was introduced last month. And it's verified, 100% THC hemp-based CBD. It, there's no THC in it whatsoever. I'm going to make sure we're clear on that because when I was talking to Will Branham, and he happens to be a retired Navy SEAL, and he owns this company, and it's called Naked Warrior Recovery, I said, dude, I said, I really want THC, but it's a bad thing when the HR lady pops positive, right? <laughs> so we can't do THC. That's bad. So I want the CBD oil, but I can't add the THC. I wouldn't want it in my system anyway. And so we were laughing about it. And uh, I actually invited Will on the show. Will's got a really interesting story. I mean, being that he's a retired senior chief, um, spent 26 years in the SEAL teams, a full-on career, really awesome guy. And, uh, you know, we're going to be talking about in an upcoming episode, you know, how to, how to be able to still do everything and, and keep that balance in your life, which is a challenge for any leader. And it's a challenge for HR people as well. So having him as a guest, he's, he's just absolutely awesome. You're really going to love listening to him. And I'm excited to share what he's offering with you guys because I've been using his product now for the last several weeks and I have incorporated them into my daily life and really focused on my own day-to-day -day performance recovery. Okay. And if you'd like to focus more, feel better, and improve your sleep, sleep is huge. Sleep is so important, all right? I don't, in my past, I have historically only gotten five, six hours if I was lucky, right? Now that I'm focused in on understanding what's going on with me, I am able to make better decisions. I'm able to do more. I'm clear-headed, I'm focused, I'm eating better, I'm sleeping better, I have a much better quality life, I have time for the important things outside of work, plus I have the time for the important things 
inside of work. And like you guys, I'm still working in the HR industry. I do consult, but I actually do some hands-on stuff. I teach, you know, I'm still playing the same game that you guys are. All right, so this gives you the opportunity to go ahead and figure out and consider what kind of adjustments. And the whole point about bringing these guys on and, you know, consistently sharing what these things are that I've discovered, and this is just on my own. I'm not, I'm not being rallied into anything. I'm actually saying, hey, tell me more about this. I want to know about this. Hey, how can this help me? Okay, these are the kinds of things that anybody can do. And... I am all about scratching each other's backs. So the more I can help you sh share with you the things that are working for me that are positive and it benefits you guys, fabulous. That's exactly what I wanted to do, okay? So if you want to try Naked Warrior Recovery's products, by all means, you're welcome to do so. And, I'll, and Naked Warrior actually is the old UDT. That's what they referred to the old underwater demolition teams before they became SEALs they were referred to as a naked warrior because quite frankly, the only thing that they would wear is a pair of shorts. They would wear a belt. They'd have um, a knife strapped to their side and they're swimming out in freezing cold water, uh, you know, going down below, eliminating, doing all sorts of, you know, secret squirrel stuff and, uh, you know, in defense of this country. So that's where he gets it from. It goes back to the SEALs team. So you are welcome to take advantage of a 20% discount on your first order by using the code NAKEDHR. That's right, you heard me. We're all adults. HR of neutral moment going on there. Naked HR. And you can do this by visiting www.n, as in Nancy, w-recovery.com, and you can start making the change. Remember, this is 100% THC-free hemp-based CBD products. There is This is not coming from the marijuana plant. This is actually coming from hemp. Verified, validated, confirmed, no THC, which is, like I said, you don't want the HR team popping uh, when they're using CBD oil. And uh, I promise you, you're going to, you know, double check and make sure that your, your physician is okay with you taking it. But you know what? It does make a difference. Okay. So you guys know that I love answering questions in regards to HR. August was an interesting month. It was just a funky month. September is now here. It was like the weird energy is completely gone. It's like the air's cleared. Some juju left. I don't know what that was, but we are back on track again. I'm back on track again and uh, getting, getting back into the, the, the real swing of things as you guys know it. So here we are. You can submit your questions. Uh, to the bestpractices.work website by clicking on the podcast link from the menu and down towards that bottom of that page is a submission form for you to go ahead and post your question which I may read and answer on an upcoming episode. So this one I thought was really cool because um, we've talked about this before <clears throat> but we're going to talk about it again. Um, it says an employee I terminated has left me a sealed envelope titled now I can tell you what I really think. Should I just shred it without opening or is there something to be gained by actually reading it. Now, a lot of people, <clears throat> when you're dealing with a termination, know terminations are not easy. Um, you know, you have to have those man in the mirror moments, so to speak. You've got to get, you know, your mind wrapped around what you're going to say, what you're going to do, handling your emo emotions on top of managing the environment, controlling the information, making sure you're communicating the right stuff. Uh, you know, and then dealing with all the dynamics that come with bad stuff in the workplace, right? So <clears throat> I've seen this in the past and I went through and I was doing a file audit many years ago and we came across an envelope that was unsealed and it was stuck in an employee's file <clears throat> and it was an act, it was, it wasn't even an active employee, it was a terminated employee, this file that was in an active employee's section of the filing cabinet and I asked him I said do you know what this is and the woman who ran she was an admin she she was designated HR but was really more task and function than it was you know strategy so uh, she goes uh, no I don't know what it is it's been in there and, and I didn't know ever open it because I figured it didn't really matter I was like okay so we need to open this we need to see what this is and what she didn't understand was that the risk of not knowing what was in there is there's no excuse for not knowing what was in there. And sure enough, when we opened it up, there was several accusations of sexual harassment 
uh, from an employee, and this letter served as her notice of intention to leave and possibly consider a lawsuit against the company. Now, the good news is, is that she got a job immediately and she did not file suit and claim, but it was several pages. I think if I remember, it was like six or seven pages of several accusations of several different incidences by the same person <clears throat> of the harassment that she has uh, weighed claim to. And I explained to them, I was like, this is a very dangerous thing to do. Here's the reason why. So let's say, for example, this happens again, and she didn't, you know, somebody didn't tell you about it. They said they put it in writing, and they stuck it away in this file. And then all of a sudden, something else happens with somebody else. <clears throat> you get a lawsuit, and then you get a notice of discovery, which means that you have to refrain from destroying or shredding or tossing of any documents based off of the guidance that is coming as part of this process. Now it's, you know, it can be a little long, but nonetheless, if you are unaware of something this damning inside of an employee's file and that employee who's accusing the company was aware of what the prior employee stated and included that file in the discovery process, you literally have just put your head through a noose because if you don't know what's in your employee's files, it can actually be used against you. So a lot of people will destroy stuff like this because they just don't want to deal with the drama. And you know what? Honestly, I don't blame you. I really don't. Man, I'll tell you what, some of these employee issues are really frustrating. They're stressful. They come down on you hard. <clears throat> They're really, really difficult to deal with totally get that, completely understand it. And you know what? Been there. But to never know what is in a sealed envelope is very, very risky to your company. Okay. So if there's anything like that lurking around in your filing cabinet, in your employees' files, make sure that you are opening those documents and reading them thoroughly so you understand what is in there and can do what needs to happen appropriately. All right, so our coaching program we are continuing on is helping our community of dedicated HR pros find their way moving forward through their unique individual challenges. And uh, we've got the next session that is coming up. It is, uh, registration is open at the beginning of September. So it, it's amazing that, you know, when people come together and we start talking about what's on their minds, it's a shared learning experience, which is totally awesome. Even I learn stuff. I've been doing this a long time and I still learn things every single day. I mean, not just the whole COVID-19 stuff because things are changing. I still learn things about stuff that's going on long before COVID ever crept into the, into the scenario. So I invite you to participate. So we've got a couple of resources for you guys. First off, we've got the member resource site. And matter of fact, um, I've invited um, all of the members who are currently enrolled to a feedback session so we can hear what they think of it and how to make it better. Okay, I am all about consistent improvement. How do we make things better? And then we've got the uh, monthly HR coaching program. And that's awesome too, because like I said, once a month they come in, they get to sit down, they talk about what's on their mind, they get feedback, other people chime in, they may not have had any experience, but you know what? They start thinking of really great ideas. Hey, have you thought about this? Or, hey, I just saw this resource over here. And it's absolutely awesome. And over in the Next Gen Women uh, in HR uh, Facebook group, what we're starting to see is more and more and more, we have over almost 180 members. And these this group of individuals are awesome. They're starting to share more and more information. There's a, you know, if I get a question, I'm like, hey, look, throw it out into the, into the group. Let's let a lot of people weigh in and see what's going on. And so we're getting better at doing that. And you know what? We've only been around since January. So we haven't even been around a full nine months. January 6th to be exact is when we kicked it off. So we're just rounding this ninth month. So it's a great opportunity to get in with good people. Um, I've gotten a chance to know quite a few of them, you know, 
we like 180 people and it's not often that somebody will just reach out and say, Hey, listen, I got a question or Hey, listen, can I, you know, set up some time to do some coaching with you? Love to do it. Right. But that's what it's for. And the reason why I set these things up is because I remember what it was like when I didn't have anybody either. And majority of people that are in this are individuals who are operating without either, like I know one person who has a, a per, their HR supervisor and neither one of them have any HR experience, <laughs> but they both have this title and they're both expected to perform. And so, um, you know, we throw offers out there. It's like, what do you need to work on? Help us understand what's going on. And so we've got some free webinars coming up. Um, we've got some uh, additional just you know, based off of what they are responding to on a monthly basis. Hey, how do you do this? Hey, how do you do this? I'm faced with this. What do you recommend for that? You know what? We address those things and we take care of it in the group. And then the whole focus is to help take care of one another. So you guys are welcome to come in the coaching program, the membership site. You know what? We keep these things. I keep these things affordable on purpose. Not everybody has the courage to talk to their business leaders to say, hey, listen, would you be willing to invest this? Some people want to not go down that route and be able to access important vital information where they may, may not necessarily know how to go about finding it. You know what? That's great. I make it affordable on purpose. And we're coming up on the fourth quarter of the year, which means that we are rounding, rounding into the, one of the most important quarters of all time. Because over the next several months between doing things like, you know, open enrollment and doing your benefits negotiation and, and all that wonderful stuff, plus getting ready for the year end, Really, that's a four-month process, and it's already just about ready to start. So over on the bestpractices.org website under shop is a th something that you can download called the Best HR Planner on the Planet, and it has a boatload, boatload of resources. It has a 12-month overview. It talks about the various laws that you have to comply with based off of the number of employees that you have in your organization. It has a year-end checklist that you can extrapolate uh, different ideas and start ticking those boxes off now. It also has two, three and a half pages of active links. This is a digital document, so it has active links that you can click if you ever need to read up on any one of the laws that are mentioned in, earlier in the book. Or if you just have questions, it's a, a great place for you to go in and just take a look, check out. And, and you'll understand where these things actually are located. Again, it too is also extremely affordable. You can print it, you can bind it, <clears throat> you can write in it, you can do whatever you need to to help you keep what you need in line <clears throat> and keep your strategy moving forward if you've never done anything like this. Cool. All right, so really, really excited about that. Um, let's see what else is going on. If you'd like to connect with me, you can go ahead and find me on Instagram and Facebook at Best Practices in HR, and that's where I send out general updates. Also over on Instagram, you can follow me at Brenda the HR Lady, where I share more about what I'm personally up to. And if you'd like to connect with me professionally, you can find me on LinkedIn. I'm Brenda, just by using my name, and that's Brenda Neckbottle. That's N-E-C-K, like the thing you want to choke, V as in Victor, A-T-A-L. Over on YouTube, I've also been building a library of videos that you can find me again by using my name. And I also co-host another show called The Real HR Show with the evil HR lady herself, Suzanne Lucas. We are re, we took a little time off during the summer and we are back at it again. We are no longer doing that show live. We are just doing it pre-recorded. And uh, this week is uh, about ready to go up as well. So lastly, you can also jump on the website at bestpractices.org where you can read up on the new updates and that I called out earlier in today's episode. And this is something new that I decided to add. Just simply visit the bestpractices.org website and click on the podcast link and you can get to this week's articles that I mentioned earlier. Also, while you're there, go ahead and click on connect at the top of the page to get my best practices delivered directly to your inbox. Folks, thank you so very much again for joining me. Super happy <laughs> September is here. We're rounding out the year. 2020, I mentioned this earlier in a call that I had, is like the year of the one-two punch right in the face. I've never, I have never seen a, a wider group of people, a larger group of people take so many hits, uh, so many chops to the face. And this is definitely that year that's happening. But you know what? It's starting to come to a close, which means 
that so long as we're standing in vitality and having that that position of strength and moving forward, we're going to get through it. So that's what we're talking about for the month of September. Come back. Please join us again. Um, got some other really awesome guests coming down the pike. You're going to hear from Will Branham again over at... Um, over at Naked Warrior Recovery and learn more about what he's up to, about his, uh, the things that he's experienced as a leader. And matter of fact, you know, senior chiefs and master chiefs, believe it or not, they do HR. So he's got some really great insight for you as well. So I can't wait to see, talk to you guys again and uh, we'll catch you next time. <laughs>